Tonight on Toy Shiz, a criminal, a comedian, and a clown walk into a bar. Let's talk toys. Welcome back, everyone. Toy Shiz here, and I am back yet again to give you guys another fresh look. And today it comes courtesy of my friends over at McFarland Toys, and we're having an advanced look at their, well, some of their, we'll just say, Batman DC Multiverse 3 Jokers wave. Kicking it off with old Batman here. Of course, yes, it's a very Batman heavy line, right? But yeah, we got another Batman. He looks pretty cool. Nice photo of the figure on the back. And of course, here is his barcode as well. If you want to go ahead and screen grab that. We also have one of the Jokers. This is the Clown Joker. And if you've not read the comic book, I suggest you take a look. It's actually not a bad comic storyline. And here's his barcode as well. They call this guy the Death in the Family Joker. And then you have the old school criminal Joker. He's like the original 1939 classic looking Joker. Very solemn, very brooding sort of Joker. And of course, here is his barcode as well. And then finally, we have Red Hood. Now, this is the Red Hood and how he looked in this particular storyline. He went from less brown jacket to more motorcycle fetish. And of course, yes, here is his barcode as well. And like I said, if you've not read the Three Jokers storyline, essentially, yes, there are three Jokers. The criminal, the clown, and the comedian. All kind of taking a page out of the various eras that the Joker has existed. All his various forms from a brooding bad guy to a homicidal maniac to a more fun and then going back to cutting his face off or... <laughs> Whatever the Joker does nowadays. But just an FYI, there is also a Batgirl and how she appears in this comic book storyline. And then you have the comedian Joker, which is more the killing joke Joker. This Joker is a Walmart and now a GameStop exclusive. Unfortunately, we don't have those to look at at the moment. But rest assured, when I do get a hold of them, we totally will. So this is going to be fun. Sit back, relax, grab yourself three cups of coffee. Well, make it two cups of coffee because we only have two jokers but there's three jokers you get what i'm saying this is a look at the brand new batman dc multiverse the three jokers wave part of the three jokers wave by mcfarland toys and while i got you guys here please do consider subscribing we're going to be talking everything dc fandom 2021 for its reveals this weekend from batman movies to toys i guarantee you'll find something here that you like now here are all four figures taken out of the packaging they got their little stands they also got their trading cards they did go the action figure pictures more than the art this time around but for me i don't mind it at all i kind of like them it's like the old mcfarland spawn art cards but of course we'll kick it off with the red hood he comes with a stand and he comes with a crowbar at this point jason todd is just jason crowbar it's smaller it's rubber it's okay red hood it's not my favorite look for red hood you know what i mean like i like the brown jacket the first version that mcfarland toys did that's red hood but i really like what they did with the figure he looks like he crawled right out of the comic book and he gets some nice head articulation he's got that gorgeous cherry red helmet underneath it's more of the red body armor. It's got some paint here and there. I like his little red hood, right? But the jacket itself and the arms looks like motorcycle jacket leather. They did a great job sculpting that. That looks fantastic down to his gloves, which he does have trigger holding hands. And if you haven't heard by now, they're not really giving all these characters guns no more for the moment. But no pistols. That's like Red Hood's whole deal is guns for some reason. Batman lets him do that but no guns. He does have some waist articulation. He does have semblance of a crunch. He'll go back more than he goes forward. The legs, everything else will kick out. It's standard articulation, but it works for a red hood figure. I would say, if anything, it's the lack of the pistols that really make this figure, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it's great. Don't get me wrong. He's got great articulation every which way, but that's the red hood's whole shtick. He's the gun toting guy, hopefully with rubber bullets, right? But in either sense, they sculpted him nice. He looks great. He looks like, again, right out of the comic book Three Jokers storyline. But now you got to find yourself a pair of guns for this guy to really make him the Red Hood. And then next up, we have the criminal Joker. It comes with a stand and a cane. It's nicely done. It's a little bit thick for his hands. His hands are very tight. You're going to have to heat him up, but... It's nicely done in that sense. There's a little J at the top of the cane, so I do like that. And the Joker figure itself, 
Hands down, that's an amazing head sculpt right there. Even if he's not smiling, he's not doing much. He's more of like the solemn Joker, and I like that about this Joker. If you've seen the comic book artwork, or just even the original 1939, he's always brooding, he's always thinking, he's got that scowl, smile turned down until he goes Joker's wild, right? But in this sense, it's kind of nice to have this more solemn head for the Joker. The rest of the body, it doesn't match the level of detail that the head has. It's far too just plasticky. You know, it doesn't have all the detail that you would expect, like a wash or something to that degree. It does look okay, but I think he gets a little bit long in the torso. The color of the suit is nice. His spats, his shoes are done nicely. They got a nice sheen to them. But if anything, yes. It's the face portrait that really sells this figure. Articulation aside, I mean, he does all the crazy DC multiverse positions. And if you're going to sit this guy at a desk or just have him stand there with his cane and move his head around, <laughs> you know, in that sense, then it's a great joker. He just looks a little awkward. He's got a heck of an ab crunch to him, as you can see, right? He'll go all the way down. You can put him in the new Batmobile, the Batman 66, if you want to. No, he won't fit. But you can see underneath how it kind of works. So it's basically just an overlay on top of the body, and that's what the clown joker will share as well. He gets a little diapery too. I feel like I'm just saying, oh, you know, I don't like it. It's a cool looking joker, and it's a very fun joker because, really, it's a joker that's really not made all too often if at all so again the head portrait sells it i think it's great you're gonna have to heat up the hand to really get this cane in his hand or i kind of like that with his open hand you kind of just stand him and he looks like he's being supported by the cane actually i really dig that look for this particular joker and that's how he will be displayed but in all honesty i think you'll definitely dig the look of this joker bringing us to the clown now the clown joker comes with a joker fish, right? Of course. It's one of the most terrifying looking joker fishes. Of course, look at the face on that thing. It could have been a little bit better painted. The white is kind of blotchy on that. And he comes with a crowbar. It's a different crowbar than the one Jason Todd has, of course. But again, the Joker and Jason Todd and Robin, it's just like crowbars for everybody at this point. Comes with a stand and an even better head portrait on this guy. That is the Joker right there even though if you've read the comic it's not really the joker but hey you know what this doesn't matter that's the joker wink wink and he's got some great head articulation and like i said so it's basically the criminal's body now with a new jacket he's got the little flower right there purple down to a darker purple pants in the green and like i said with the criminal joker the head and the body don't exactly match i think this one fares a little bit better but the level of detail in the face doesn't necessarily match the level of detail in the body. It works, but again, you know, it's that sense. And he goes real diapery, like real rubbery. But in terms of articulating the Joker, you don't have to go up that high. It just looks weird when you do that. Standing normal, yeah, it looks fine. And then if you wanted to go this route, he's going for his fish. <laughs> I just like that they included the laughing fish. I think that that is very cool and a very nice nod to old fashioned comics. So. This is of the two Jokers that we're looking at. That's my favorite of the two. Now, when it comes to the more killing joke Joker, which we'll look at later, we might change that. But this is a great looking clown Joker. And that brings us to old Batman. And he comes with the Bat Grapple. And this thing actually looks pretty cool. And when you pose him firing it out, I mean, it looks great. A nitpick is that I wish this would come off. That way you could have a bat gadget. And then if you wanted to pose him pulling it off his belt or something like that, it just gives you an option. You know what I mean? It comes with a stand. And then, yeah, this is this is probably the best Batman that they've done so far. It's the most classic-ish Batman that they've done so far. And he looks good proportionately. If he would have had like a darker black under ruse kind of thing going on, it would have been nigh perfection. But I love that he's got the bat glove things, and he's got one heck of a cape on him. I mean, look at the detail and just the sculpt work on that. That's a great looking cape. And the head sculpt on this guy is fantastic. He's got a lot of texture going on that matches the cape. He's got that old fashioned Batman symbol, the yellow, the belt. The belt, I mean, if you wanted to say, could have had a little bit more, we'll say, but the articulation is great on this guy. You can do him all kinds of Batman poses. He won't crunch forward all too much, 
but he'll go back. So you get him in poses like he's flying out or he's back grappling or whatever you want to do with Batman. Flying around, who cares? Zipping him around the room. Bicep, double jointed elbows, the wrists. The wrists actually hide that ball better, I think. Kicks out. You could do flying kick right to the Joker's face. Everything in that manner. Punch him in the face. He's got punching hand. I wish he would have come with extra hands. Just saying. But in all honesty, yes, this is one of the best Batman, if not the best Batman thus far by McFarlane Toys in terms of its classic look and just being overall proportionately sound. Now to talk about the Red Hood. That's a very teeny tiny Red Hood compared to the other Red Hoods, wouldn't you say? Don't know why he's so small compared to other Jason Todd's. The look is, again, not my favorite, but in scalature, right? So let's say this is my new Batman for the DC Multiverse. That's not a bad scaling, right? But the brown-coated one scales better, I think. So again, scaling, which you'll see in just a second, is something they really need to work on. Now going back to his trigger-holding hands. Now I thought I could use the guns from the previous Red Hood. Unfortunately, his hands are a little bit too small and they are incredibly hard. You're gonna have to heat them up to really get any type of weapon in there. So you're gonna have to go through your weapons drawer and find one because this moment <laughs> from the comic book is not happening anytime soon. But he does have a crowbar if you wanted to go that route. You know what I mean? Batman's just standing there allowing this to happen. And the scalature on the Joker versus Red Hood is very off to me. I feel like yeah, he's too small compared to the Joker. But this new Batman next to this Joker, which is like now my favorite multiverse Joker, yeah, this works pretty good. I would say they look great. Now in conjunction with prior Joker releases from DC Multiverse, I didn't mind this head portrait, but again, you see new head portraits. This one I was not a fan of, but you see the level of detail that they got going on now. It's just so much better. And in going all the way back to Batman 1000 with the blues and the blacks, well, it's no contest. They've really brought it with this one. He just looks a lot more sound. He looks proportionate. Everything kind of fits better. So yeah, they have definitely improved upon the original Batman that they first came out with. And in looking at other Batmans, these are my three favorite Batmans now that DC Multiverse has done. I really like the look of these. Different iterations, different comic artists, different styles. But it just says Batman better than most that have come out. And he will kind of sort of fit on the new Batman the White Knight bat cycle. You kind of have to fudge it in there, like from different angles. I mean, of course, I'll say this. He does fit, but he doesn't exactly sit on the seats. He's just a little bit too tall, but he does look cool on it. And again, back to scale, not to beat a dead horse, but I love this Superman and I love this Batman. They're right around the same height, which is okay. So. These work a little bit better, especially with Hal, I want to say. But in the totality of the wave, I would say the odd man out is definitely the Red Hood. He's just a little bit too small. But if you've got the brown jacket one, it definitely works. And the best part is there is no collect -a build figure for this wave. So if you wanted to, you can pick and choose. So that's going to wrap it up for my look at some of the new figures from the DC Multiverse McFarlane Toys 3 Jokers wave. Batman, hands down, awesome figure, love it, of course, yes, could have included some extra accessories, batterings, that's what I would love to see, just a Batman with a ton of batterings and gadgets and everything else, one day, I do like the criminal Joker, I think that he just looks good just standing there, there's not much to this guy, so I'll let you go either way on that one, he does have some hiccups here and there, but for the most part, he looks cool just standing on your shelf, the clown Joker, he's fun. He does have a little diaper action here and there, but the two head sculpts on these Jokers is fantastic, and I really like that he comes with the laughing fish. And again, not to pick on the Red Hood, but his scale is a little bit too teeny tiny. That coupled with the fact that he doesn't have his main weapon that the Red Hood is known for in a crucial moment in this comic book. But that's not necessarily a McFarlane Toys error. That's just what's happening with Warner Brothers. It's not my favorite costume, but in the sculpting and the look of the figure, yeah, he's definitely cool. It's just that he's got to come with something else besides a crowbar from now on. No more crowbars for Jason Todd. But I am curious to know what you guys think about these new figures. Are they for you? Will you be grabbing? Did I change your mind? Either which way, comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything three jokers. And thank you again to McFarlane Toys for sending these out to give you guys this fresh look. 
Don't forget about DC Fandom this weekend. We've got the new Batman trailer coming. Looking forward to that. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, yes, as soon as I have Batgirl and the Killing Joke Joker, then we'll see how these all match up. But in the meantime, enjoy these. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.